I recognize the member for Guelph. Thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, rise today to speak on Bill 171, the government's uh, let's rip up uh, local planning bill to speed up transit. And um, while, Speaker, I think it's important to figure out how do we facilitate and build transit faster, we have to do it in a way that's right. And doing it in the right way means respecting local planning processes. It means not circumventing the expropriation process. It means not sh short-circuiting the environmental assessment process. Good planning takes time, to, and in order to take time, that's how you get it done right and actually ultimately save time in the long run. If you think about what's delayed transit planning in the GTAHA, for the most part, has been politics. We could have a 17-stop LRT servicing Scarborough right now, but we had a previous mayor's administration rip the transit city plan up. We had an environmental assessment approved for the Ontario Relief Line with shovels starting to go in the ground now. Ask the people in Hamilton who want an LRT what they think about delays in transit. Best practices for transit planning require community engagement, engaging um, uh, local experts, engaging in a proper planning process. And if you short circuit that process, it could actually lead to more delays. So if you look at the delays on the Elling Eglinton LRT right now, none of those delays would be addressed by, by this bill. As a matter of fact, there are parts of this bill that could have even made that, could make that situation worse if the government rushes through it too fast. And I'm deeply concerned about what happens if the government uh, short circuits the environmental assessment process, begins moving forward with projects, and then they find out in the environmental assessment process that you, are, you have a problem. And you've already spent hundreds of millions of dollars moving forward on the project. Is the government then going to say, oh, we're going to write off those sunk costs because we now have a problem, or are they going to address the problem? I think there's a number of communities that want an answer to that question ahead of time. There's also a number of homeowners and businesses that want to know what's going to happen if my property is expropriated and now I don't have a tribunal process to go through in order to make sure that it's done properly, I'm, I'm adequately compensated, etc. So my caution to the government is, is you can speed things up in a way that you actually get it wrong. And so take the time to engage in a proper planning process to get it right. Thank you. Questions? The member for Aurora Oak Ridge's Richmond Hill. Thank you very much, Madam Speaker. Uh, to my honourable colleague uh, from Guelph and uh, members of the opposition, I, I, I have this question to ask. We know that transit needs to be built. We all know it. It helps commuters. It helps businesses, especially small businesses, families, students. Madam Speaker, when we, the previous government constantly promised this election after election, didn't follow through on their promise when they got elected. We did. We promised it. We brought it in last year, and the opposition voted against it. Now, this bill will not only build it, but it will build it faster for the people of Ontario. Why is the opposition having such a hard time with this? This is what the people of Ontario want. If you go to your constituents, they're going to tell you, we want transit, we want it built, and we want it built fast. Why would you oppose this? So I'd like to remind my honourable colleague that most of the reason transit hasn't been built is due to political meddling. We could have a 17-stop LRT in Scarborough right now, but we had a previous mayor come into Toronto, maybe related to the premier, who ripped up a transit plan. The environmental assessment on the Ontario Relief Line has already been approved. We could start building the relief line now, but the government came in and ripped up those plans. Talk to the people in Hamilton who want to build an LRT and have that ripped out from underneath them. It's political meddling that is leading to the problems in getting transit built. And if the government moves forward with this and doesn't engage in proper planning, Speaker, Response. it could actually lead to longer delays in the long run. Questions? Member for London West. 
Uh, thank you, Speaker. I uh, appreciate the uh, remarks from the member for Guelph, and I wanted to ask him to expand a little bit about his concerns over uh, speeding up the environmental assessment process and, and what are the you know what are the pitfalls of of making that process, which is already uh, uh, compressed uh, and less rigorous than other environmental pr um, assessment processes. Uh, what are what are the the dangers that we face uh, by the what's proposed in this bill. Member for Guelph. Yeah, thank you, Speaker. So I uh, appreciate the question from my honourable colleague. The environmental assessment process is really designed to identify problems, challenges that will arise. It's an opportunity to engage community and hear from small business owners and residents, planners and other experts to make sure you get it right, to identify potential problems. And the failure to do that could actually lead to significant costs for the province. So I feel like I'm standing up here and asking for fiscal responsibility, <laughs> add a little caution to the process, because my fear is, is if we move this along and we have co-development co happening in the environmental assessment identifies a problem and the government's already thrown hundreds of millions of dollars Response. to the project, will they recognize the problem and back off and stop, or will they plow ahead and make the problem worse? Questions? The member for Barry Innisfil. Uh, I just had a question for the member opposite, just the fact that uh, we currently have an environmental assessment pro process for GO Transit, uh, and it has not hindered the environment at all, in fact, zero times uh, on record. So this would be no different than that. So are you opposed to having more GO Transit built while, while increasing environmental protections? Member for Guelph. Yeah, so uh, in some ways, the uh, uh, honorable member, thank you for the question. You're actually kind of start making my point for me. We have an environmental assessment process. It's more complex in urban areas because you have more density, you have more stakeholders, you have more existing development, you have more uh, hidden infrastructure. There's a whole host of complexities that need to be addressed. And if you don't address them properly, and again, if you've sunk hundreds of millions of dollars into a process before you identify problems, is the government going to plow ahead? Are they going to eat that sunk cost? Uh, it raises a number of questions that require an Response. answer. So to me, the fiscally responsible approach is to get it right in the first place. Question, member for London West. Uh, thank you, Speaker. I'd uh, like to uh, ask the minister, or the the member for Guelph, um, to elaborate a little bit about the Eglinton crosstown. He did mention that uh, many of the problems that uh, that were experienced with the Eglinton crosstown would not be addressed by uh, Bill 171. Now, I understand that, in fact. Bill 171 uh, could could make what happened in Eglinton Crosstown even more uh, of a concern with some of the other transit projects that are um, that are underway or that are contemplated because of the additional powers that it gives the government to accelerate construction without uh, without compensation. And I wondered if the uh, if the member shares those concerns or if he would like to Question. elaborate on that. Member for Guelph. Appreciate the member for London West asking a question again. Uh, so one of the challenges you face on any major transit project, and I think most homeowners would understand this as well, is that oftentimes as you move things forward, you experience unexpected challenges or problems, which then lead to delays. And so one of the reasons to engage in proper planning and taking the time to do it right is that you actually look at what are the contingencies? Have we thought through all of the, the contingencies, potential challenges that we might face to ensure that we avoid the kinds of complications that you see with the Eglinton Crosstown? Now, sometimes you just don't know until you know shovels go in the ground or you start tunneling or you open a wall or whatever. Spots. You don't know what the, what the complications can be, but the more planning you do ahead of time, 
the more you can recognize and avoid those complications and avoid the additional costs and delays Thank associated you. with them. Question the member for Burlington. Thank you so much, Madam Speaker. I, I, I'm listening intently to the member from Guelph, and you're saying that government has a responsibility to get people moving in out of the cars. Well, Bill 171, Building Transfer Fast Act, does just that. So I'm curious. Why do you oppose spending $28.5 billion creating jobs and getting people moving? You need to pick a track. Can you tell me what track that is? Member for Guelph. So getting trans people moving on transit is an absolute priority. That's the lane I pick. I've been very clear about that. It's one of the reasons I have concerns about this bill. Not every aspect of the bill, but one of the reasons I have concerns around fast-tracking this bill speaker is, is that in the end it could actually lead to more delays. If you don't do proper planning, if you don't get it right, I mean, I think uh, a member earlier talked about some of the challenges this government's had when it's rushed things through. I mean, we have license plates that you can't see, you have stickers that don't stick, you have an autism program that doesn't work. Those are the kinds of things that happen if you rush things through quickly. So the reason I want to get planning right is precisely because I want transit built. Precisely because Response. I want to give people an opportunity to get out of their cars and get on transit. And I want it done right, and I want it done in the most fiscally responsible way. Question, member for London West. Uh, thank you very much, Speaker. Uh, to the member for Guelph, um, the, the government has said that one of the goals that it hopes to achieve with Bill 171 is to align the rules for transit construction with P3 procurement, and in particular to enable the use of innovation by P3 contractors. I wonder what his thoughts are on that. Is that a, a worthwhile public policy goal to have more P3 procurement? Member for Guelph. The Honourable Member for the question. And, uh, I have some deep concerns about facilitating P3 development. I mean, we had an Auditor General's report not that long ago that talked about how P3s increased costs by $8 billion for various construction pro uh, projects that the government engaged in. So, you know, I would caution the government about going down the P3 model because history has shown that it oftentimes increased costs. In some ways, what you're doing is, is you're privatizing profits and socializing risk. And that socializing of risk falls on the backs of the citizens of Ontario, the people who pay the bills around this place. And so that's exactly why we need to get it right. That's exactly why we need a public planning process to get it right. It's exactly why we need people who are operating in the public interest to get it right. That's ultimately how we're going to get transit built. It's ultimately how we're going to get transit built that puts the public interest first. Response. It's the way we're going to get transit built in a way that's most fiscally responsible. Further debate, the member for York Centre. 